Greetings, Earthlings. I am so happy to be recording my 400th video. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. In less than a year. Um, so yesterday my video was, I think, the 397th, but then I went ahead and made the two videos um, public that I recorded on the 4th of July, the music videos. One is a very obscure Red Hot Chili Peppers song, and the other one is an even more obscure Joni Mitchell song. So please be nice if you listen to those and make some comments. It's been literally decades since I've done serious voice lessons. So, you know, it's just like anything else. You've got to keep it, you got to keep practicing. So I do like to sing, but honestly, I sang a lot for my mother at her bedside while she was passing away, which was a very long drawn out process. And unfortunately I haven't really been able to sing since then. So I'm trying cause you know, it does bring me a lot of joy and it brought her a lot of joy and it was a really sweet and peaceful way for her to separate herself from this earth, which she did not want to do. She fought long and hard. So, you know, a lot of what we talk about here in true crime is precisely that, right? The separating ourselves from this earth. Well, not us, but other people. And it's so tragic, especially when these people are young, especially when it's so avoidable, especially when it's malicious, when it's intentional, and then especially when it's covered up and especially when it's covered up by authorities that we trust. So why am I talking about all this? As you know, Kylie Rodney is kind of my first case to get me going on my channel. Trinity Bacchus, kind of my second case. I've interwoven in there some of um, like Mia Zapata, Stephanie Sargent, and Kristen Pfaff, um, and a few others. But largely the last nine months has been this Idaho 4 case. And now, just in the last half of a week, Maui. So Maui happened two weeks ago, you guys. And as you probably know, President Biden finally made it yesterday after two weeks. And oddly enough, he was visiting Tahoe. And so he took a day trip over to Maui and then back to Tahoe. Another Kowinky Dink. Everything I say is simply my opinion, simply for the sake of conversation, hoping to open up a discussion, and I always hope to learn something. Thank you for being on this venture with me, and I hope that you find my videos educational. They are all made specifically for YouTube, which is an entertainment platform. So please hit your like button if you'd be so kind, share, subscribe, ring your notification bell if you like to be notified when I'm coming on live or just dropping a video. And I do intend on doing my videos live again very soon. So these are the three cases I wanna talk about. I'll start with uh, Maui because um, I just discovered a new channel to me last night called Hawaii Real Estate and it's a big channel. It's been around for a while doing real estate stuff. And now they're covering what seems to be testimonial accounts of eyewitnesses from the disaster. And it is horrifying. So I'm going to put a link to them in the description, the Hawaii real estate channel. There's about a 40 to 45 minute drone footage video that I highly recommend highly, highly recommend. Um, it was taken the day after the tragedy, epic tragedy. That's an understatement. And it's got nice music playing in the background. So that kind of helps. It, it's not as hard to watch as I thought it might be. Um, but also another channel that's been covering Maui other than Shanda with Squirrels on Fire. And I know CNY has been doing some opened mind perspectives. So I'd like to recommend all three of those channels to get information if you're interested. Open mind perspectives, I'll put a link to one of their videos, a short funny one, I mean funny not funny. Um, I'll put that in 
and then I'll put one of the CNY videos in and I'll put the link to uh, one of Shanda's lives from over the weekend where she talks about it. So is it Lahana? I'm so bad with enunciation. I think that's the village that burned down and it's horrifying. So as you guys know, they did not sound the alarm system when they knew the town was going to go up in flames. And they said they didn't sound the alarm system because they were afraid that people would think that it was a tsunami and they'd run up the hill, which was towards the fire. And that is plain effing ludicrous. It's looking to me like maybe they didn't sound the alarm system because it would have interfered with the dew drops. If you don't know what dew drops are, look it up. It's D-E-W. It's hooked into the whole thing with Tesla. Um, it's uh, frequencies. So not lasers, but frequencies. So let's see. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, other than if you think it's a conspiracy theory, then that's your prerogative to think that. I would like to think that it was just a series of a cluster gone awry way over the top. But I'm also going to refer you to the um, community post that I put up yesterday, which was sharing something from the Hawaii real estate channel um, about some laws that had just changed. So it's looking to me in my conspiracy theory <laughs> that something was going on here, you guys, that this was not just an act of God. Um, and as you know, there's still at least 800 people missing. The last number that I heard calculated this morning, I think was like 117, if even that high. And come on, it's been two weeks. How many of these over 800 missing? And we, when you say over 800, do you mean slightly over 800 or like a lot over 800? How many of them? could have survived. It's not looking to me like many. And I hate to say that I like to keep hope alive. And I'm sure for people who are missing family members, there's nothing more devastating than the waiting. It's almost a relief to find out even when it's tragic news, just to have that animosity, that ambiguity, ambiguity was the word I was looking for. That ambiguity is such a hard place to exist. It's even harder than the awful truth. So um, my heart breaks for everybody that's suffered, that's lost friends, that's lost family, that's lost property and pets. I'm so worried about the pets, you guys. I mean, of course, I'm way more worried about the people and the rebuilding. And I'll just stop right there. My heart goes out to everybody in Lalani. I hope I'm saying that right, Maui. I've not had the uh, distinct privilege of visiting that island, but hopefully someday I will. And who knows, maybe one day soon, maybe I can go and try to help be part of the solution. Um, that would actually be super, super cool. But I think we all need to be careful about that too, because sometimes going to these places can add to the crisis if you're not well trained, if you don't have things organized. So myself included, all of us, we need to be mindful of that. So let's get into the Idaho four case. Um, where to begin? As you guys all know, there were the court proceedings on Friday. Um, not a lot of outcome from that yet, but um, I want to give a shout out to Hard Truth. She has been doing some very creative and innovative work on YouTube. She, in her most recent video, brings up the body cam video from Banfield in front of where this happened, you know, like a block away, but in front of where this happened. So the body cam video is at 3.01 AM. 
And we're supposed to believe that these crimes occurred around four. But prior to the end of December, we were led to believe that it happened between three and four, right? So personally, I still believe that it happened between three and four. I more and more think that the criminal defendant is the fall guy and that they changed the time frame to fit his phone pings. But all those phone pings, I don't even know about that. You know, they say that they're not GPS accurate, that they're um, as much of a 13 mile radius. Like, really? I don't understand how that works. If anybody does and wants to put it in the comments, please do. Anyway, so Hard Truth talks about um, that 301 body cam that perhaps the person who made that call for the underage um, drinking frat boys that were crossing the field, that perhaps they were dry snitching. Perhaps some of what occurred may be in those body cam images, you guys. Even on mainstream media, they talked about, um, I think it was the four people that ran by in the background and you could see them like uh, in front of a window. There was some discrepancy, whether it was three people, four people, something like that. Um, and it's hard to say. I mean, there was a lot of activity going on that night, especially with the football game of UC Davis, which is their rival team, as far as I know. Um, that's been circulated again and again that UC Davis and Idaho, uh, University of Idaho, our rivals. So UC Davis came, played, won, beat them bad, like twice the score. And then all the partying that goes on afterwards. So what was up with the UC Davis football team? Where were they staying? Were they staying somewhere on campus, I would think, or maybe in a hotel off campus, possibly? Where were they partying? Were they at the fraternities? That's pretty likely in my humble opinion. So let's see. Um, more about that later. I want to touch on the Kylie Rodney case. Um, dang, that ninja chihuahua and uh, what is the uh, channel of Divine, aka Mrs. G, Divine Justice, aka Mrs. G. Those two are shredding it up in my opinion. So I think it was the Divine Justice, aka Mrs. G, that one of her most recent drops was about Kylie's keys. And did Yosemite Sammy I Amy do something with those keys? As far as I know, those keys have never been located. So the cell phone, the black box, the laptop, and the keys. Where do those fit in? I hope they're mentioned in this re upcoming report from the California Highway Patrol that should not have taken a year to write again, unless they're doing a serious investigation. But my fear is that they might be doing a serious cover up. I hate to say that. I hate to cast doubt on any entity of authority that, you know, is, is really all we've got. So if these entities don't deliver truth and justice, then the evil forces out there that are behind this will continue, whatever those evil forces are. I have my own beliefs about what they could be. Um, and not to be vague, but we hate that freaking C word. We don't mind the corruption C word. It's the other C word that people just get spooked. They're just, it's like you're talking about aliens or something. And I just like to say dealers or thugs. So it's my belief that these cases, Idaho and Truckee, that these communities are making a lot of money off of the thugs, off of the dealings, and that 
they will protect that multi-billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollar annual industry. It's huge, you guys. It's absolutely huge. And especially since COVID, a lot of these large entities are in a lot of trouble financially. Follow the money. That's what we always say, right? All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one. Keep it short and sweet. Video number 400. I'm so excited. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a really good Tuesday. It's the 22nd. It's almost 11 a.m. I'll try to get this video uploaded as quickly as I can. And peace out. Sending you light. Sending you love. Have a wonderful day. I hope you can get some exercise and fresh air and sunshine. Some peace and relaxation. Good nourishment. And very important to stay hydrated. It's uh, nothing to take lightly, especially right now with all the heat in all these areas. I know my area is super hot this week. It's like 100 degrees with the heat index. So keep your cool, children, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching. You guys are the bomb.